Hi there everyone and welcome once again to the Train Aid HQ. My name is Nick and in today's video we are looking at the Level 3 Certificate in Assessing Vocational Achievement, otherwise known as the Carver Qualification, and we are going to be investigating Unit 2 and Unit 3 and this is our Assessments Guide video. So the purpose um, of this video is to give you some examples and uh, a guide in order to break down these practical uh, assessments for your Carver course. Uh, once again, uh, please do uh, like the video and also subscribe uh, to the channel to receive the latest alerts and updates from the, the team. So let's get started with today's video. Now, the purpose of the video is to really identify the difference between a workplace and vocational assessment. So many do, learners do ask us, what's the difference between the two? OK, we're also going to give you some practical advice on who you can conduct your assessments on, um, what should be the topics of your assessments um, to explain uh, what is a product of work and to give you some examples of a product of work as well, because we're going to need them for your workplace uh, assessments. We're also going to be looking at what criteria and standards uh, should you use for your assessments, um, how to complete um, the assessment template documents, and also the, the details of the observation and the professional discussion as well. So we are going to go uh, through each of these steps within uh, this video. OK, now um, you may be signed up to one of three separate um, assessing courses. Obviously, the, the most popular version is the level three certificate in assessing vocational achievement. OK, now what that means is that's the full Carver qualification. And that means that you can assess candidates within their working role and also a vocational um, a classroom, uh, a training situation, so a training environment. So um, if you're signed up to the full carver, then you need to complete unit one, which is the theory assignment, and then you need to carry out four workplace assessments for vocational assessments and also one of your assessments needs to be observed by a qualified assessor. The other two strands of our assessing courses is the uh, award in assessing competence in the work environment. This is where you complete unit one and you also need to complete four uh, workplace assessments on two people. And obviously the, the vocational assessments are not required. Out of your four uh, workplace assessments, one of those must be observed by a qualified assessor. And finally, we have the award in assessing vocationally related achievement. So very similar to the uh, the award, uh, you need to complete unit one and then you complete four vocational assessments with one of those being observed by a qualified assessor. And obviously the workplace assessment is not required. So as you're watching this video, um, if you're working on the full Carver qualification, there are eight practical assessments to complete. But if you're working on the award of either the, uh, the, the work environment or the vocational strand of the qualification, then it's four assessments to complete. So let's Let's just get started. Um, so in terms of your, your Carver, your assessing course journey, you have finished unit one. So very well done. That's the theory uh, assignment, understanding the, the knowledge of becoming an assessor. So now you have to complete uh, four vocational assessments and also four workplace uh, assessments on two uh, on two people so these could be two colleagues these could be two learners undertaking a course or a qualification or it could be two candidates once again studying uh, your course okay so uh, you should be thinking about who you should conduct your assessments on now one of these assessments must be uh, must be observed by a qualified assessor that could be an in-house assessor or it could be one of the train aid team here so we could observe you live um, remotely over zoom or teams or we could of course observe you in person as well the final element of the course is a professional discussion and thus this must be completed uh, to sign off the qualification 
On the right hand side here, as a reminder, we have um, the Carver certificate. So once again, um, the awarding body is high field qualifications. And this is something that uh, you will uh, obviously uh, achieve once you gain the, the qualification there. So that is our assessing journey. OK, um, now in terms of planning uh, your your assessments, then within your journey, you should start to think about the, the practical uh, assessments and you need to think about these two people. Um, who should be um, willing to conduct um, their assessments. So think about perhaps um, two colleagues, or it could be two ex-colleagues that you decide are going to be the, the focal point for your portfolio. OK, um, as you can see here, we have this grid and this may help you uh, when planning your assessments. Um, so you have your your two learners. Um, so these could be colleagues and both learners will experience the first vocational assessment and they will also experience the second vocational assessment as well. OK, so um, you obviously have those two candidates and they will experience um, two uh, vocational assessments each. And for your workplace assessments, you can, of course, use the same two learners or they could be different. And once again, they will experience um, two um, uh, first uh, workplace assessments followed by two uh, second workplace assessments. So there's essentially four vocational and four workplace assessments with one being observed by a, a qualified assessor. If you're unsure at any point on the purpose of your assessment and the topics, don't worry. Uh, during this video, we're going to give you some examples of uh, what you can do to conduct your assessments on and who as well. So hopefully the, um, the structure of your assessments uh, becomes easier as you as you progress. OK, um, so in terms of who uh, you should conduct your assessments on. Um, so these could be any two people. These could be um, these could be colleagues. These could be two experienced managers. These could be two learners undertaking a qualification um, to apprentices. It's just two people who are willing to experience some type of assessment. OK, now, um, the assessments that you create could see the learner demonstrating their skills, perhaps their day to day skills. OK, or it could be, um, you know, you could conduct an assessment on them if they are experiencing some new type of training. But ultimately, you are seeing them perhaps within their day to day working role. You're refreshing their knowledge. OK, so my advice is to keep your assessment as simple as possible, but hopefully you've got two people in mind who can be uh, your guinea pigs uh, for uh, your assessing portfolio. Now, um, what should uh, my assessments be on? Now, that is a very, very common question. OK, now, once again, it's best if your assessments are as simple to understand uh, to, to for the learner to, to understand and to, to gauge. So do keep these simple. Assessments uh, should be relevant to the learners, perhaps their day to day working role um, or if they're if they're perhaps studying towards a qualification. It's something that they are familiar with. So we don't want to make assessments complicated for the learner. So, for example, observing a hairdresser, hairdresser wash and cut a client's hair or an engineer operating machinery within a factory can experience an assessment. OK, so these are very straightforward um, assessments that you should maybe start to think about. Obviously, cater your assessments to your your own um your own working role and the learner's working role. Now, the assessments you plan for your qualification may last anywhere between perhaps 10 minutes to one hour. So they don't need to be uh, two hours long. They don't need to be uh, long in duration. I would say an hour maximum. 
Um, just a thought-provoking question is, think back to when you undertook your own qualification or training. What assessments did you undertake uh, to become qualified within your role? And also what criteria or specification did you encounter? So all of your experiences uh, with, with, with obviously you becoming qualified, uh, you can use those assessments uh, for your assessing course. So in terms of the difference between the two, OK, many candidates do ask us, Nick, what is the difference between workplace and vocational assessments? Well, vocational assessments are assessments which assess the candidate's subject knowledge. OK, whereas workplace is seeing the candidates uh, within perhaps their day to day working role. Um, so vocational assessments are conducted often within a private setting away from their working environment. So away from uh, colleagues. Um, away from uh, customers okay um, so vocational assessments can take place within perhaps an empty training room um, it can be within an empty office or perhaps an empty salon uh, away from customers for example now in terms of your carver qualification um, we would like for you um, to uh, to deliver two different types of vocational assessments we would like for you um, to to ensure that your your two learners undertake an observation um, so a simulation okay within a, a practical setting so for example cpr that's an observation that's a simulation demonstrating uh, practical skills within uh, a controlled environment and also a theory uh, test as well such as an assignment or a multiple choice test so we'll be talking about these in greater depth here but vocational is very much where you're assessing the candidate's subject knowledge OK, but it's without the presence of customers or colleagues as well. Um, here we just have a slide on uh, some differences between uh, workplace and, and vocational and, of course, the, the different industries. But do have a look at our YouTube channel. There is a video where we do talk about the different industries. Um, but let's just have a, a look at a few um, in terms of fitness. If you are perhaps a fitness instructor or a gym instructor, um, a workplace assessment could be a gym induction. Uh, where you see perhaps a fellow gym instructor or personal trainer um, uh, show uh, a client uh, around a gym and conduct uh, a gym induction, or it could be you know a personal trainer instructing perhaps a one-to-one -one private session. So that is a, a workplace assessment there. Um, an example um, of a, a vocational assessment, this could be a theory test on principles of training, or it could be on anatomy or anatomy and physiology. So that is testing the, the, the gym instructor or personal trainer's knowledge on their subject there. OK, um, in the world of perhaps beauty, this could be a treatment on a client. OK, so with an actual customer, perhaps um, seeing uh, a beauty specialist um, uh, demonstrate a manicure, a pedicure. OK, so that would be a genuine workplace assessment where a vocational assessment could be a training scenario. So it could be once again a practical uh, assessment, but it's on a peer as opposed to a customer there. OK, um, a final example uh, could be uh, teaching. OK, so if you were a teacher, you could perhaps observe uh, a teacher um, within their day-to-day their -day lesson. So delivering a lesson, whereas a vocational assessment is um, observing perhaps the teacher mark learner assignments, for example. OK, but I, hopefully you can see um, the different um, types of of uh, vocational and workplace assessments as well. But obviously, if you do feel that you need some further guidance, please do get in contact as well. Now, workplace assessments. Um, so these are the focus of uh, the candidates within their day to day uh, role. Um, so it's seeing the, the candidates show their day to day role, their responsibilities, and you are going to observe them. OK, so you are perhaps going to observe them, um, interact with colleagues, for example, um, whereas uh, vocational is conducted within a private setting. 
as a as a, um, a guide, all workplace assessments must include the following assessment methods. Observation um, of the learner demonstrating their skills, verbal questions and answers, and also a product of work as well. And we're going to give you some guidance here. So all workplace assessments must contain uh, these three uh, assessment methods. OK. Now, um, a product of work, OK, uh, again, this is a very common question, Nick, uh, when undertaking my um, workplace assessments, what, what is a product of work? What does it mean? So uh, a product of work is any evidence produced by the learner, which can be used to confirm competence within their working role. So, for example, an office administrator will have letters, emails and reports they have produced. So that is a product of work. OK, uh, another example could be um, within uh, a shop. Um, so a um, a, a shop owner might give um, a customer a receipt. And so that is a product of work. So it has been created uh, by the uh, by by the learner, for example. So um, within your uh, potential uh, work uh, based assessments, you can start to think about the, the product of work. And let's give you some more, more guidance on this. So here are a list of product of work examples that you could take forward for your own workplace assessments. So it could be a completed checklist uh, by the learner. It could be a risk assessment, which has been completed, a classroom register, um, a receipt, uh, a work sign-in sheet. It could even be pictures of items the learner has constructed, such as um, an item that has been welded within a factory. So that even though it's been produced by perhaps the learner you're observing, if they produce something like that, then that is an that is an example of a product of work. Um, other examples of product of work evidence um, could be perhaps um, a client consultation form. Um, this could be a lesson or session plan created by the learner or even an inspection report. So there are many different um, examples there. Um, to give you some, some further guidance here, um, we do have um, some product of work industry specific examples here. So we have the, the different fields, uh, some of the most popular from um, our assessing courses. We have obviously the, the workplace assessment and the product of work uh, example as well. So just to name a couple here. Uh, here. Uh, so we have um, the uh, industry of fitness, the, the actual workplace assessment could be perhaps a gym induction or instructing a session. And the product of work could be a client consultation form or uh, a personal training session plan. Uh, once again, in the world of hairdressing, um, the workplace assessment could be a, um, a hair wash or a haircut with the clients. And the product of work could be perhaps a customer receipt. It could be a picture of the, the client's haircut or a customer booking form as well. So hopefully you're getting the idea of, of what to include within your workplace uh, assessments here. All right. Um, so let's just have a look at some examples um, of, of vocational assessment. So um, as we know, uh, you need to identify two people to conduct your assessments on and they should have some knowledge um, of your of your fields. OK, now. Um, in terms of the assessments, uh, you need to um, give your, your two learners uh, a knowledge test, such as a multiple choice test or a written assignment, that's going to test their knowledge. But you also have to um, observe the, um, the learner conduct a skill within a controlled assessment. This is away from customers and colleagues, by the way. So just on the, the grid below, I have come up with a, an example. So I've got my two two learners. These are my colleagues, Tom and Bill. And for the first vocational assessment, this is an observation of the learner perform CPR within a training room. So both Tom and Bill are two uh, first aid uh, professionals. They deliver first aid courses and they need to ensure that they're keeping their CPR skills 
up to date for when they go out and teach on courses. So for my uh, two first uh, vocational assessments, um, we have a CPR practical and these will be uh, good examples uh, which are shown within uh, your course joining instructions. We also for vocational three and four. This is the second vocational assessment. So I'm staying with Tom and Bill, and they are going to both complete a multiple choice test on their first aid knowledge. So hopefully you can get the idea in terms of your own vocational assessment. So it's two learners, these can be colleagues, and you're looking for two assessment topics. So something quite small, it could be performing CPR, or getting the learner to perform a practical skill, and also a theory-based uh, test looking at refreshing the knowledge of the uh, of the two candidates as well. Now, on the other hand, uh, workplace assessments. Now, workplace assessments they must contain an observation, questions. Um, and also a work product as well. So for observation, you are going to observe the learner within their day-to-day -day working role. Um, after the observation, you are going to ask verbal questions, okay, to the learner to ask them about their performance. And also you need to, to submit, you need to show some evidence of work product or a product of work okay so the learner must produce uh, this evidence and you must submit that with your assessing paperwork now uh, for this example we're moving away from cpr and first aid uh, we are going to be looking at uh, two uh, barbers okay um, and the names are harley and also connor as well and we have the first workplace assessment and the second workplace assessment as well so in order for you to plan your workplace assessments you need to think about two different topics so your first workplace assessment so for this example is an observation of a barber conducting a beer trim beer trim on a customer so both of my barbers uh, will uh, conduct uh, a beer trim as we can see within the, the photos there OK, and the second workplace assessment, once again, I'm staying with my two barbers and I will observe them cutting the hair of of two customers. OK, so um, once again, you're seeing um, each of your two candidates within their within their day to day working roles. But obviously, um, both of the um, both of the candidates will experience obviously two assessments each okay so once again you could perhaps use this grid here to start to plan your own uh, workplace assessment but once again in terms of a timeline the assessment might last somewhere between 10 minutes to to one hour as well okay the next criteria, um, the next section of this video, we're looking at what criteria or standards should I use for my assessment. So all assessments must have some type of standards or criteria to, to be used. So you, the candidate assessor, are going to use these standards or criteria to make a judgment on your learners. OK, now another common question is, Nick, where can I find these standards or criteria? Don't worry, they can often be found on an awarding body website. They can found they can be found uh, within a company or staff handbook or any type of industry standards as well. If you don't have um, uh, any criteria or standards that you can find, then you can create some with your uh, with your two learner's permission. Um, so in terms of uh, length, um, the, the standards or criteria need to be one to two pages maximum. And I'll show you some examples of what I mean with your standards and criteria. Um, but my advice is to keep these uh, simple as possible. So here we have an example. We have um, some standards and criteria from a vehicle check okay um so if you're working if you're working perhaps on a construction site if you're conducting uh, an assessment of a vehicle you could use these standards um in order to observe the the learner conducting perhaps uh, a vehicle check so even though um 
you are very knowledgeable perhaps within your working role of course you need to have some type of standards so this is showing that you are objective and when it comes to your observation report you need to map what you see to these standards okay that's very important within the role um, of an assessor so here is um, the actual uh, example um, of those uh, standards and criteria so we here we have the assessor um, observing uh, the learner conducting a vehicle check and they will have some type of standards and criteria okay uh, once again within our examples we will show you some um, examples of um, observation reports and they have been mapped to a criteria as well um, so the same goes with a vocational assessment um, you must have some type of standards or criteria in order to create your your multiple choice tests okay um, so here uh, we have obviously two candidates performing their multiple choice test and these are the standards used to create the questions for the multiple choice test. So when it comes to your vocational assessments, if you've got some type of vocational um, standards or criteria used to make uh, your, your, your questions for perhaps a multiple choice test or an assignment, then please do submit those as that will be um, excellent supporting evidence as well. OK, um, so in terms of your own uh, vocational assessments, hopefully uh, we have given you lots of ideas, but it might be worth using this grid uh, in order to help you to plan your assessments. So just remember, um, with vocational assessments, um, there must be an observation of a skill with within a controlled assessment. OK, um, this is away from customers or fellow colleagues. And the second um, assessment that each of your candidates must experience is a, a knowledge test or a, a simply a written test, a multiple choice test or an assignment. So it's going to be assessing the candidate's knowledge as well. So you have learner one and learner two. And of course, they will experience um, an observation and they will all also experience um, a knowledge test as well. So you can start to think about those those topics there that you wish to plan. Obviously, with your assessments, do make them personal to you and your industry. OK, so um, in terms of um, this uh, vocational assessments for your first vocational assessment um, I am going to I'm going to to observe both Tom and Bill uh, perform CPR okay so I need some type of standards or criteria when I observe each of them so for this assessment it might only take 10 minutes but once again I, I need some type of standards and criteria to make a judgment on them OK, and what I will do is I'll talk you through um, a vocational assessment to give you an idea of the, uh, the different stages there. OK, so for uh, vocational section one, this is our assessment front sheets. Um, so you, the candidate assessor undertaking the course, you need to input your name. You need to put in the course location, whether it's the online self-paced course, the webinar course or the classroom course and also the start dates. Um, underneath, we have the assessment and learner details. This is the person that you are assessing. So as you can see there, I will be observing my colleague, Tom Cassily, within the train aid HQ and I've circled the vocational uh, assessment. So this is number one. So if you are working your way uh, through the assessment front sheet, please put in your details as well as the, the candidates uh, that you are going to obviously conduct your assessment on. Section two is all about the learner. OK, so we need to gather as much information um, as possible. 
um, about uh, the learner undertaking um, the assessment. So this example, I will be observing Tom, who is a first aid instructor. Um, please include the description of the environment where the assessment will take place, um, the, the qualification. So describe the qualification and criteria to be used for the assessment. Um, identify um, any support needs for the learner and if they do have uh, an additional need um, then please do make any reasonable adjustments that's absolutely fine as well um, and just remember if you have a qualified assessor present please do write their name in that section there if not then please put uh, uh, not applicable or no assessor present. Um, there is also a learner declaration as well, a learner confirmation. So we just need um, the, the learner to, to write their name and also a signature as well. And that's to say that, yes, I'm happy to, to experience an assessment. OK, so step, section two is all about uh, the details of the learner experiencing the assessment. Section three, um, this is all about the assessment plan. OK, so this is uh, providing the, the reader uh, with details of your assessment. So it will include the date, the time, the location of the assessment, the planned activity. And you can also include the, the standards or criteria that you are using for your assessment. Now, another uh, section of uh, section three is to include the pre-assessment target. So this is to obviously provide your learner with some perhaps some targets that they can use for their upcoming assessments. OK, um, so this could be perhaps to read um, a handbook um, to get them prepared for their upcoming assessment. So it's always useful to give learners some targets so they're ready for their assessments. Um, once again, this page on section three does need to be signed by you and also the learner as well. And do include dates, okay, so we know when section three has been uh, carried out. Section four, um, this is all to do with the standards and criteria. So um, with each of your assessments, you need to include some type of standards and criteria. Um, so this can be taken from perhaps an awarding body website. It can be taken, uh, let's say, from um, a, a, an intranet. It could be taken uh, from a staff handbook as well. So this is my criteria here so I've used the FAIB standards and we are looking at CPR so just a short criteria uh, for this example yours might be a longer uh, more detailed criteria but it should be about one or, or two pages in in maximum okay and you're going to use this uh, for your uh, your your assessments basically OK, section five um, is the the observation report. Um, so this is where you are going to observe uh, the learner and you are going to um, you are going to essentially write the the observation report here. So you are going to write down what you observe. And that's very important that you are going to be obviously observing the, the candidates. And obviously on the right hand side, uh, you are going to, to write the evidence reference column. So you are you using your standards and criteria in order to make uh, a judgment as well. So please use your standards and criteria in order to make a, a judgment here. OK, um, that is something that uh, takes a little bit of time to, to get used to the observation report. But please do show evidence of mapping to the criteria as well. Um, the next section um, is uh, verbal questions. 
So on this section, you need to essentially plan your your questions to be asked after the assessment has taken place and my advice is to plan five to six verbal questions so after the observation you're going to sit down with the learner and ask them some questions which are relevant um, to the observation you need to ask the question and you need to write down their answer as well and once again you need to map your your questions um, so the questions are relevant to the criteria as well so make sure that you're asking uh, the learner questions within a quiet setting and you are recording your answers as well okay so aim for five to six questions plan your assess assessment questions well in advance and you're writing down the learner's response now section seven if we look at that um this is all to do with um the the photos um of the assessment so you need to take uh between five to six photos um within your practical assessment so as we can see here we've got uh, various um different photos of the the practical task and we also have a written description uh, detailing each of the, the photos there. The um, section seven, um, so the photo sign off sheet just needs to be completed by you, the candidate assessor and also the, uh, the learner as well. We also need a date on there. Um, that is uh, something that you will need to, to complete. Uh, just as a reminder, if you work in a sensitive envi environment, you don't need to take um, photos of the, the face of the learner, that's, that can be covered up, or you can perhaps take photos of the, the back of the learner back of the learner's head or you can take photos of the assessment environment but any uh worries about photos please do get in contact with us okay when you're writing um the assessment there okay now just moving on we have the post assessment feedback stage this is where you are going to give the learner their results okay now this is where you <clears throat> the candidate assessor are going to tell the learner about their results so did they pass um what went well and it's an opportunity for the learner to tell you how they found their assessment as well. So for, for section uh, one, um, this is the learner assessment feedback. Um, so we are going to ask the learner how they found the assessment. So what went well for them? Were they comfortable? Um, did they enjoy their assessment? So, you know, what went well? Um, what did they, they enjoy? OK, so that's going to be very important for you to take on board as an assessor. Um, section two is where you, the candidate assessor, need to provide them with feedback on their strengths and also areas for development as well. So as you can see in the photo there, um, I am giving my feedback to Tom. So I'm saying what his strengths are and his areas for development as well. So once again, it's conducted within uh, a private setting as well. Section nine um, is the action plan. Um, so after the assessment has taken place, you've given the learner their strengths and areas for development. You should give them perhaps a future target. OK, um, so you can obviously give them some targets such as to attend a future CPD course to perhaps read some further information um, about perhaps their next upcoming assessment. And you need to sign and also date the, the action plan. So you, the candidate assessor, and also the learner, you need to sign and date this, this document here. If a qualified assessor is present, then please do ask them to, to sign this, this observation uh, report as well. OK. OK. So um, that is um, vocational assessments one and two. I'm just using this example as a guide. Now we're moving on to vocational three and four.
So this is where I'm going to use the same two learners for my portfolio, Tom and Bill, who are two first aid uh, professionals. And this is where I am going to conduct uh, a multiple choice test. So I'm going to talk through the, um, the same steps as my first uh, vocational assessment. So this assessment is going to be more theory, theory based rather than practical. So let's just have a look at the, the stages then. So once again, um, section one is very straightforward. Um, you are going to complete the assessment front sheet. So once again, you're inputting your details here. And we also have the, the learner details as well. And make sure that you put the details of the, uh, the assessment in. Now, um, section two is all about the initial um, assessment. So this is where you're going to be uh, essentially inputting the experience um, of the of the learner, okay, perhaps their job role, and describe the criteria to be used for the assessment there. Section three, um, once again, is uh, providing details of the assessment and, and what's included. So this assessment is going to be more, more theory-based, okay? It's going to be uh, a one-hour written test paper. Uh, so you might decide to use a multiple-choice test. Um, it could be an assignment. It could be um, any type of knowledge test for your assessment. But once again, uh, we're looking for, for signatures and dates, and perhaps to give them a pre-assessment target as well. So that's very good practice to include. Now, section four is the assessment criteria and standards. So you need to include the standards that you are using to make a judgment on your, your assessment. OK, as we can see here, um, I have the uh, the knowledge test criteria, and this is going to help me to create my multiple choice test. So do include some type of standards or it could be a handbook. And this is showing that you are using this as a guide um, to create um, your, your multiple choice test or assignment questions. Now, section five is the actual test paper as well. So you need to include a blank test paper and also a scanned test paper from the assessment. OK, now, um, as you can see, just on the, uh, the front sheet there, I have created some very basic questions. So what are the roles and responsibilities of a first aider? We have a section for the learner to complete. And on the right hand side, we have the criteria uh, mapped to those questions as well. So you could create your questions, but you could also link it to your criteria. And that's showing that the questions you create are relevant. Now, if you already have a, a, a test paper, then absolutely, please use that. If you're uh, given a test paper from perhaps an awarding body, then that's fine to use. But if you don't, you can, of course, create uh, a test paper here. Um, just following on, um, obviously, we've got questions three to, to 10 there. Um, so you can perhaps create uh, 10 questions if you're if you're making uh, a multiple choice test um, or if you wanted to, you know, you could um, you could use perhaps um, um, any type of assignment questions as well. So the choice is yours, but please make sure the questions are relevant to, to your assessment field. Um, for your vocational assessment as well, we're also looking for you to, to see perhaps a scanned uh, copy or any photos of the marked test. So as you can see, this is the learner's handwriting, but we also have your, your marking as well. So you can see that um, sections have been ticked and this is showing that um, an assessment uh, has taken place. So we're looking to see for scanned photos um, of the test or any type of, of photos to show that um, an assessment has been taken place. So either uh, scanned uh, paperwork or photos are fine. Now, the next section is, is photos. Uh, we're looking to see photos of the assessment as well. Uh, once again, if it's perhaps within a, an exam room or perhaps a, an empty office, four to six photos. 
Um, and as you can see there, I have got mine. I've got one, two, three, four. That is Tom undertaking the test. And once again, please do describe uh, what the, the photos are showing. And we are looking to see um, the, the learner signature and also your signature as well. So make sure that you put those on there along with the dates. Section seven is the post assessment feedback. So this is asking the learner how they thought the assessment went for them. This is informing the learner if they're passed or not. And also uh, to find out how the learner found the assessment as well. So exactly the same as before. Section one. So step one is asking the learner how they found the assessment. What did they enjoy? Did they feel like they had enough time during the assessment? And also we're providing them with feedback feedback. So this is you, the, the candidate assessor, providing feedback to the learner, saying what did they do well and if there was any areas for development. Now, section eight is the, the action plan and, and sign off as well. So once again, this is giving the learner some targets to improve their practice. So things that they could improve on in their future. OK, and once again, we're looking for a signature, both of the learner and the assessor and the date here. And this is this is where our assessment has come full circle. OK, so very important. We are providing a target and some dates. So that is a video just on um, the two different types of vocational assessments. Um, and now we're looking at workplace assessments as well. So for workplace, you need to carry out two assessments on each candidate. OK, candidates or learner, it, it's, it's the same thing. But we have learner one, we have learner two, and they need to experience two topics um, each. OK, now. Um, each uh, workplace assessment must include an observation, verbal questions and a product of work as well. So uh, just as a reminder, we need to see those those two things. Now, I'm just going to come back to this example of um, the two two barbers. We have obviously Harley and Connor. OK, but it's the same principle for your workplace. You have those two uh, different um, colleagues and they must experience two topics. So the two day-to-day, uh, -day, it could be two day-to-day -day working roles. So for example, a beard trim and a haircut, well, those are two topics. So you need to think about the, the same two topics there. Okay. Now, uh, just as we've done for vocational, I'm just going to guide you through workplace. Now, there is a, a slight difference uh, when writing these out. and We're going to give you some some feedback. So we have the assessment front sheets. Um, as, as you can see, we have the, the candidate assessor name and the learner details as well. OK, so very important that you are providing your own details there and the details of the learner. So I am, once again, I'm going to use um, hairdressing and uh, barbering as an example here. So make sure you put the, the learner details on there and the assessment uh, type. Section two is all about the information of the, the learner. So please ensure um, that you are describing the assessment environment, um, details of the, the criteria, and whether any support is needed. So once again, do um, provide any uh, reasonable adjustments if the learner um, has requested that. We also need for the learner to sign and date the learner confirmation as well to say that they're happy with the assessment going forward. Section three, as we know, this is the assessment plan. This, uh, this details the assessment, such as the, the date, the time, and more information about the plan's activity. Um, you can, of course, include the criteria or standards uh, within um, the, the planned activity. So it gives the reader some information about what is involved. But once again, we're looking for um, a signature by both the learner and you, the candidate assessor. Section four. Now, this is the, the criteria and standards that you are using for your, your observation. So uh, once again, um, as you can see here, I've got a picture of the standards and criteria. 
okay it just needs to be one to two pages my advice is to, to number your standards or criteria and this is going to make it easier to map uh, for the the observation uh, report this is the the second page and as you can see here we've got the learning outcomes and also the criteria that's 1.1 1.2 all the way down to to criteria 2.2 and as i mentioned this is going to make it nice and easy for when you are conducting your observation okay now as we uh move on we have the product of work and you need to include some product of work evidence now there's many different examples here it could be a customer receipt it could be perhaps an online uh, customer booking confirmation so this is going to be used uh, by you to show that an assessment has taken place there section six is the the observation report um, so when you are observing uh, the learner, you need to write down your observation notes. OK, you're 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 writing down what you've observed. And on the right hand side, we have the evidence reference column. So same again, you are going to be writing down and mapping your observation notes to the criteria. And this is showing that you are an objective uh, assessor. So very important that you that you do that now. The next criteria is verbal questions. So as we know, for all of our workplace assessments, we need to include some types of, of questions. So this could be once again between five to six questions and you are going to conduct this within a private room. All of the questions are relevant to the learner's working role. And you're writing a question um, in advance, by the way. And so you're asking the questions to the learner, you're writing down their response, and uh, you are also mapping your questions to your criteria. So like I've done here, all of the questions are mapped to my criteria as well. Okay, even if a learner has got the question wrong, you're still writing their response and you can obviously discuss the, the questions um, at this time as well. Now, question eight, uh, section eight is the uh, the photos. Um, as you can see here, we've got five to six, five to six photos of uh, the assessments. OK, um, and we also have the description here as well. So very important that we're writing a brief description of um, each of the, the photos there. Um, we must also sign and date this this section. So very important we, we do that um, as well. Section nine um, is the post assessment feedback section. This should be conducted in private. So for, for step one, you're asking uh, the learner all about how they found the assessment. What did they enjoy um, about their assessment? And also step two, this is where you're giving the learner their result. Did they pass their assessment? What were their strengths? And also any areas for development as well. So very important that we do give them uh, lots of, of feedback and let them know if they're passed or if a reassessment needs to take place. Step 10 uh, is looking to the future. So for this section, you need to provide them with some targets. Um, so you need to say um, perhaps what they could do to improve their practice in the future and what could they do perhaps reading a handbook or specification it could be attending perhaps a future cpd course or some training or to uh, to, to observe a fellow colleague so all of those are some ways that they could improve their practice and we also require a learner signature and a candidate assessor signature as well so very important we do include some photos um, just the tail end of this video now, uh, we've got obviously the, the observation and professional discussion. So out of your eight assessments, one of those does need to be observed by a qualified assessor. Now, this is very important. Uh, in order to sign off your, your qualification, you need to be observed by a qualified assessor. And the qualified assessor will observe you uh, briefing the learner, um, sorry, the, the candidate uh, sorry, the qualified assessor will observe the candidate assessor, you briefing the learner about their upcoming uh, assessment within a private room. 
um, the qualified assessor will observe you, the candidate assessor observing the learner carry out the assessments. Um, the qualified assessor will observe the candidate assessor um, asking questions to the learner. And finally, the qualified assessor must observe the candidate assessor providing feedback and the results to the learner within a private room as well. So the qualified assessor will observe, observe one of your assessments. This is usually workplace number four. OK, and the qualified assessor will complete an observation report and a professional discussion must be done afterwards as well. So the professional discussion is um, a conversation between the qualified assessor and you, the candidate assessor, looking at your overall assessing strengths and areas for development as well. OK, so the next step in our Carver journey, if you haven't already done so, please do send a plan of your first assessment to the assessment team to, to be reviewed. The team worked to five working days and they'll give you an idea of uh, if your assessment is a good one or if it needs some some tweaks, if it needs some changes there. OK, but please also remember to send in your criteria and standards with your plan. OK, that is the end of our video. Hopefully this has given you lots of ideas for your vocational and workplace assessment. So once again, please do like the video if it's been useful or any videos you would like the team to, to, to film and review. Uh, please do let us know as well. OK, so thank you for watching. Uh, best of luck in your assessing journey. And we hope to see you on one of our future courses. So bye for now.